Welcome and thanks for joining us at Funeral Innovations Trends, Tips, and Tech. In this chat, we're going to talk with industry leaders, discuss marketing trends, technology innovation, and talk about how digital marketing helps you better serve your families. My name is Megan and I am a client success manager here at Funeral Innovations. And I'm Heather, I'm the director of marketing at Funeral Innovations. And today we are very pleased to be talking with Sharon and Kersha from Guam Windward Memorial just to learn about some really cool things they've been doing to serve families during the pandemic. As all of you know, the novel coronavirus pandemic has really reshaped the way we interact with one another and changed how we do business. However, it hasn't changed the basic human need um, to grieve a lost loved one. So that's why we asked Sharon and Kersha today to join us because they've done some really creative things to connect with their community members during the pandemic. Um, some things we're going to talk about today is just um, some virtual events that they've done that have really connected their community members um, to their firm. So again, welcome Sharon and Kersha. Thanks for having, um, thanks for being on um, our, our conversation today. Oh, we're happy to be here. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, of course. So Let's just dive right into it then. So I, I mentioned you guys have had some really great um, virtual events in the midst of the pandemic, you know, because of the stay at home orders and social distancing firms have had to find alternative ways to host their usual in person events. Um, so you kind of can you just talk about the last couple events that you have had um, whether I know um, you You've done an Easter egg hunt that was virtual and um, a virtual bingo, but can you just talk about, you know, how um, you were initially supposed to have those in person and how you adapted those to a virtual setting? Sure. Um, so basically, every year at Guam Windward Memorial, we try to have some type of Easter event, and we had a huge event planned for the community for Easter, and of course we had to cancel that to keep everyone safe, um, but our community is very close-knit here on Guam, um, which for people who don't know, it's an island um, in the Pacific near Japan, I guess, Japan and the Philippines area. <laughs> so a lot of people are like, where's Guam? So that's where <laughs> we are. So we're a very small, close-knit community, and um, everybody looks forward to community events um, to bring people together. So we had to move that to a virtual Easter egg hunt and we literally had to figure out how to do that within just a, a week or two. Um, so we looked at some scavenger hunt apps and um, looked at uh, how to integrate Facebook and how to integrate our website and things like that. So we went with a scavenger hunt app. Um, everybody loved it. We had I can't even remember, 500 participants, which was actually about double of what we would have had in person. So the reach was much further. Um, the community was so grateful to have something to do for Easter weekend for the kids who were stuck at home. Um, so they, it, it, the Easter egg hunt ended up being absolutely huge and um, from that, we're actually going to integrate the scavenger hunt app again for uh, Memorial Day and go with it that way. And then going forward, when the social distancing and stay at home orders are lifted for us, we'll integrate the scavenger hunt app um, all over the island with everything um, sort of culminating at Guam Windward Memorial to bring more people to the cemetery to see how beautiful it is there. And then as far as bingo goes, uh -huh. Oh, I just had a quick question. Can you kind of describe what the experience of the app was, Sharon? So uh, we use the app called Scavify, and basically it's super easy to set up a scavenger hunt. Um, we used we Scavify is normally for like an in-person scavenger hunt where people go to locations to take pictures or selfies or find QR codes and things like that. Mm -hmm. But what we did is we uh, hired a company to create a video of Guam Windward Memorial and we hid digital Easter eggs in the video um, so that people could still see how beautiful it was and they could pretend that they were like walking through the cemetery looking for Easter eggs. 
Um, and then they would take a picture, a screenshot of the Easter egg that they found in the video, and they would submit it through the scavenger hunt app. They would get points for that. And then um, at the end of the day, there were lots of different ways that they could earn points. Um, they could earn points by watching the video and submitting pictures, uh, screenshots of all the eggs. They could earn points by, I don't know, um, solving a puzzle. They could earn points by doing a crossword. They could earn points by submitting selfies. I even had them, I mean, we, we made it fully interactive where people actually had to do things that they could do at home. Like um, we had them do the chicken dance and they had to make a video of themselves doing the chicken dance and they got points for doing submitting the video of the chicken dance and they got extra points if it was a really good chicken dance <laughs> so I, I watched a lot of videos of chicken dancing <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> yeah i mean we had them do and it was fun for them because they could um incorporate their whole family in the chicken dance or we had them sing if if you're happy and you know it clap your hands we had them do all kinds of fun, you know, video or selfie type interactive things, not just watching the video, because that would have been, you know, sort of boring and non, yeah, and that, that would be just like promotional, you know, hype or whatever. But so we made it a lot of fun for them. And I can't even tell you how many, I mean, we had hundreds of people sending us emails and thank you, thank you for doing this, thank you for, you know, helping our community, you know, through this difficult time, Etc. So it, it really ended up being much more of a, a benefit to us. It was a lot. It was like a lot less expensive. I would say a third of the price and effort of what it would have been if it were an in-person event. And the result was astronomical as far as you know goodwill in the community and people seeing our our uh, cemetery for the first time on video and they're like wow it's so beautiful out there i want to have to i want to go and visit just to see how pretty it is so it, it was definitely a huge win for us that's terrific and it sounds like you really provided value to your community um education and fun instead of just making it like you said a marketing um yeah piece yeah that's great. Yeah. Well, that is that is what our our whole theme for our cemetery is celebrating every every precious moment of life. So whether you're celebrating, you know, the living or what, whether you're celebrating the life of a person who has passed in your family or friends, it's all about celebrating life, every precious moment and making every moment precious. That makes total sense. Megan, do you have another question? Yeah, so so Sharon, those are all great things. And like you said, it sounds like you know initially, um, you know, on such short notice, you had to turn that in person at event um, to online. And you talked about some of the benefits um, of of you know what that event was. But what would you say um, would be the biggest benefit that you found of of having it turn into that virtual? Um, virtual event that you maybe weren't expecting or just um, that you were happy with how it turned out? So I would say the benefits would be um, having a, a lot more people able to participate and having it be a lot less expensive um, than actually doing a, a physical event. Not to say that we won't do physical events in the sure. future, but sure. And th this was, it was, uh, we were uh, shocked <laughs> yeah. in a very happy way. We were very shocked. We were like, wow, this actually worked out really well. Um, so I would say just doing something like that out of the box and getting really creative. I think a lot of it though was the fact that everybody is stuck at home and they are looking for things to do. Um, they are looking for ways to have fun and ways to, you know, occupy the children. And I think a lot of that, a lot of this was, you know, a way to keep the kids occupied. If you're stuck at home with children, you know, for extended periods of time and not able to give them something to do, this is, I, I think that was one of the reasons it was such a huge response is because, you know, trying to find things for the kids to do. Sure. And so you, you touched on your um, Memorial Day and that you are planning or are hoping to do an event there. Can you kind of just touch on 
that if it would be like you said a, a, a similar kind of scavenger hunt or, or what are you guys planning to do for um for that event um, well, what we're thinking of for that event, because they're actually, our, our government is planning on lifting stay-at-home orders um, here very shortly, um, because we haven't had any new cases on island for, I think, two weeks now. Um, so we're, we're in a good place. Um, obviously, we still want to um, promote social distancing and being safe and staying you know, away from others as much as possible so that we can continue uh, lifting some of the restrictions that have been put in place, uh, keeping everybody safe. But now that people are gonna be able to get out of their house, we'll do a real scavenger hunt where they would have to go to um, locations on island specific to veterans and uh, we're a huge military community. So we would give them places where they can go to, you know, recognize the memorials of the military on island and things like that. So they would take pictures and then we would have it culminate with uh, photographs, uh, taking selfies or what, what have you at Guam Wind River Memorial, not as a uh, public group event, but on their own going to Guam Wind River Memorial and you know, taking a picture of one of our statues or you know, something like that on their own. Um, so it would be uh, not a stay at home event event but it would not it would also not be a group event it would just help people get out of the house sure that sounds great that sounds fantastic um you know as we talk about whether it's in person or virtual but um for those that are still looking to like you said you've had so much success with the virtual you definitely wanted to you know mix some of those into the future with some of your in-person do you have any tips for firms um, you may have had to cancel in-person events or they're just not ready to do them yet and they want to transition over into an online platform. Do you have any recommendations or just best practices that you've learned while hosting a few of these virtual events? I would say um, think outside of the box. Uh, think about what your community likes to do. Um, like for instance, our community here in Guam loves to play bingo. Loves, I mean, bingo is huge. We actually have bingo halls. <laughs> in every little village, we have a bingo <laughs> hall. And um, so they're, you know, so you think about what your community likes to do, what they want to do, what they're missing, and try to find a way to do that online. And there are so many apps out there. There are so many digital platforms out there, and they're so cost effective. Like our bingo game costs us $30. And oh, wow. like seventy dollars, yeah. As a, we can get five hundred unique bingo cards, uh, digital bingo cards for thirty bucks. And then we have a Facebook uh, live bingo game, and everybody loves it. it. You know, so that's working out really well. It's a lot less expensive. So I would say, you know, save save the money um, for your in person events, um, and look for the sort of easy way to do an online event using some of the apps that are available, using Facebook, definitely. Um, we haven't gone into any type of Zoom parties or anything mm -hmm. like that, but I think Facebook is working out pretty well for us. Um, but there's so many apps, just all you have to do is Google, you know, figure out what you want to do for your community and Google um, the different apps that are available for that. That's great tips. And would would you say anything to people who are nervous about trying to foray into the, sort of this digital experimentation? <laughs> well, uh, neither Kershaw or I had experience doing scavenger hunts or bingo or Facebook. I mean, I've done Facebook Live before, not by choice, but I mean just for fun on my personal page. But I, you know, we're not <laughs> we're not huge into this digital stuff. <laughs> and gotcha. and uh, Guam is actually. Guam is actually a little bit, um, I would say, a little bit behind the states as far as digital and and, um, and social media and stuff like that. So it's, you know, we have to be careful not to go too much further than our community can go as far as doing that. So I would say that the advice is jump in. Uh, don't spend a whole lot of money up front. Jump in and test it a little bit. Um, tell your community, I mean, tell the people that you're marketing to that, hey, we're just trying this out. 
Um, we want to see, you know, we're trying to do something for you guys. Um, and they totally understand. Like our first bingo game, it was a challenge in a lot of different ways. And we had a lot of little technical difficulties. And, you know, we would laugh and we'd say, hey, we're having a technical difficulty right now. And um, working out the kinks and we're having another bingo game tomorrow night and you know we have a lot of people signed up for that one and yeah when you know maybe we lost a couple people from the first one to the second one because of our technical di difficulties or because it was too hard for them but if you start out small and you know don't spend a whole ton of money just test it out and then let your community know that you're testing it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are some great tips. Um, we really appreciate sharing your insights because I know a lot of people that we speak with are um, hesitant to try a new technology, but um, your evidence that it can really work. Yeah, yeah. Everybody around here is really excited about what we've been able to do. So, and, and we're going to take it, you know, take it when, when we when we're done with this whole pandemic challenge, we're going to take all of the, all of the stuff that we've learned, and I think it's made us a better um, marketing. I think it's made our marketing definitely better. That's terrific, Megan. Did you have one last question to ask? Yeah, so I have one more question um, for you too. Um, thanks again for all of that great insight. Um, this one thing to wrap everything up here. Um, what's the most important thing like you have learned while serving in this industry? So whether or not, like you said, um, just within the past couple of months, having to adapt to serving because of the pandemic or just your time in general, what's the one thing you've learned um, serving your community members? Um, well, I think outside of all of the um, the new digital online virtual setting. I think really what we are learning is how to help people grieve. I think that's a huge thing that gets um, sort of lost in the funeral industry is helping people grieve and, and more so now because um, especially since you know you guys just put out the uh, grieving at a distance thing and I think that's been around for a while but right now you know, really trying to find ways to help people grieve at a distance will, I think, make us better at helping people grieve, period. Um, really understanding how, um, how people grieve and what they have to go through and how important having an actual um, burial service or, you know, cremation service or things like that. I lost my stepmom um during this whole thing and um you know she was part of my life for 50 years and she lived in michigan and um i couldn't go see her so for me personally grieving at a distance was um wow yeah i mean super timely that 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 you guys um put that out and it just really helped me understand what i was going through um, but also, you know, helping our community who are not able to attend funerals and to find ways for them to, um, you know, access the, the burial, the services, the things like that, so that they can really move into that um, grieving process because it's so important. I really appreciate you sharing that tip sharing because I know I know a number of people who has have been in that same situation of losing someone during the pandemic and not being able to um, grieve like they normally would. So I think that's a huge insight on just how important the grieving process is for all of us as human beings. Um, so we really appreciate you joining us, Sharon, and I know you were in there. I know you had your marketing person in there too, even though you didn't talk. Are you Kersha? Hello, hi. Hi. Thanks for joining us too. I just wanted to acknowledge that you are on here. Um, we'll be posting. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I mean, I started within the last two weeks with Sharon um, and my company in general. Um, but I think the, regardless of what industry we are at on Guam, the what we've been doing here digitally with the events has just been a game changer for many places. Um, at the same time, it's, it's kind of been more 
although it's not what we would want, it, it's something that is fun and it's a challenging way to change things up. I mean, everyone always has, like Sharon said, we're a big community um, oriented um, island, so everyone's so used to having these events, so being able to do something different um, presents a fun challenge for us. So I've enjoyed it. That's terrific. Well, we really appreciate both of your time. Um, we'll be posting this video on our blog and on our YouTube channel for the audio for it. And then you'll be able to access it on our Facebook feed. If, for people who are okay. recording um, in the future, if you have topics you'd like to do, see discussed, just comment in the comments below the recording and we will try to get those topics addressed for you. Um, so feel free to check in with us on Facebook, message us on Facebook, visit our website, or you can email us at info at panorainnovations.com. Um, and I really appreciate your time. Um, thank you so much. Thanks. Everyone. All right. Thank you so much for having us.